Hey, what's up, Rattlers? You want to see something cool? Check this out. This is a flame bull snake. So she is a really high red Stillwater Hypo. They're also called flame bull snakes. And I've raised her from a baby, and this is her first clutch. And look at this. So she's got 11 eggs and a couple of duds. Not bad at all for her first clutch. So in this video, we're gonna learn all about one of my favorite snakes, the bull snakes. We're gonna learn all about what they're doing in our domestic situations and how they're making a living out in the wild so that we better know how to care for them right here in our homes. I'm Dave Kaufman and I tour the world to see how reptiles are living in the wild. And while I'm at it, checking out some of the most amazing facilities and reptile expos as well. It's all about learning, appreciation, and conservation. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. So this girl I've raised from a baby and now she's about three years old and this is her first year breeding and laying eggs. And when bull snakes lay eggs, they lay a lot of eggs as she has. And after they lay their eggs, they look like an empty tube of toothpaste and she is just exhausted. So it took her almost 12 hours to lay these 11 eggs and well, a few duds. So after she's done laying her clutch like this, the first thing we have to do is we have to make an egg box. And this is just two parts of vermiculite with one part water. And you can always tell which eggs are good and which eggs are bad, just really based on how they look. So look at these two eggs. This one is a viable one. This one is a dud. And you can see that this one is off colored. It's misshapen. This one is nice and white and perfectly egg shaped. So this is the good one. This is the bad one. So then it's really simple. Put a cover on it, put it in the incubator with the thermostat probe going through these holes, sitting right on top of the eggs so that the eggs themselves are at 84 degrees and I just leave them alone for 60 days. But I just want to point something out real quick. So when these females have their pre-lay shed, which means that they're going to shed in roughly a week, two weeks, somewhere in that time period, it changes for every female. But I'll put these females in this rack and I will use moist cocoa bark and I will fill the entire tub with this cocoa bark so that the entire tub becomes a nest box. And I've been breeding these guys for so long that I've noticed that when you put in an egg box, a nest box with like wet sphagnum in it, with the idea that she's gonna crawl in that nest box and lay her eggs in there, nine times out of 10, these guys will ignore that nest box and just lay their eggs anywhere. So I turn the entire tub into an entire nest box with this wet cocoa bark and then what I'll do is I'll clean all of that cocoa bark out of there and I'll put her on the same cocoa bark, but nice and dry, no moisture to it whatsoever. So that's what these snakes are doing this time of year in our domestic situations. But what are they doing this time of year out in the wild? Well, to answer that, we're gonna have to go north to the prairie here in central Minnesota. So where our bull snakes have been awake for about five weeks and are already laying eggs, out here in the wild on this prairie, the bull snakes are just coming out of hibernation. It's mid-May right now and the air temperature is still pretty chilly. It's only about mid, maybe mid 50s, but the ground temperature is so much warmer than the air temperature. So they're coming out of their burrows like this one right here. And what they're going to do is they're going to coil by these holes and take advantage of the ground warmth that this early spring sunshine offers. The ground temperature is much warmer because it's absorbing that sunshine and all you have to do is go look for mammal burrows like this <laughs> and you will come across this eventually hi buddy how you doing hey come here where are you going come here buddy come here you're all right so this time of year which again it's mid-may out here the bull snakes look really gnarly after they've come out of hibernation. They're usually all banged up. And the first thing these guys will do, whoa, hey, come on, buddy. So the first thing that bull snakes do when they come out of their overwintering dens is that they'll go into shed. So as you can see by her eyes, they're just starting to go opaque. So she is in what's called a post-hibernation shed. It's the first shed right after they emerge from hibernation. He's probably emerged from his hibernation den within the past week or so, but again, I can feel his body and his body is really warm even though again the air temperature is really cold out here 
but usually when they come out of hibernation, yeah, I know, buddy, I'm talking. Usually when they come out of hibernation, they are banged up. But this guy, he doesn't look too bad considering that he was just underground for a good six months. Yeah, winter does suck in Minnesota and it's long. And now the first thing he or she, I haven't checked yet, is gonna do is they're gonna sit by those burrows and they're gonna absorb that sunshine. And then again, the next thing they're going to do is they're gonna go into shed. They're gonna have what's called a post hibernation shed. And then after that, they need to secure some meals because then it's breeding season. Now, judging from her tail, that's a pretty short tail, so I'm guessing that this is a female. And what the females are gonna do is they're gonna stay pretty close to those burrows after they emerge. The males aren't gonna stay as close because they're gonna go out and they're gonna try to find females like this as fast as they can so that they can ensure that they're the ones who get to breed that year. But this is what a typical Minnesota bull snake looks like. They're really black on top, they have really dark saddles. The ones down in Texas, they're gonna be much lighter color because of the soil color that's found around Texas. So the further south you get, bull snakes get much more tan and brown. The further west you get, they start to get a little bit darker, but the further east you get, they get black and yellow. And we know that from the Kankakee bull snakes, which is named after Kankakee, Illinois, which is one of the most extreme eastern parts of the bull snakes range is in Kankakee, Illinois. They do get a little further east into Indiana. But this is a typical looking Minnesota bull snake. I've found tons of these over the decades that I've come up here. And each one of these guys is just as beautiful as the next. There is a reason why bull snakes are my favorite snakes. I just love these guys. So again, while our captive bred bull snakes are already out of brumation, have already bred and are already laying eggs, these wild bull snakes are just starting to emerge from their wintering dens. They're just starting their post hibernation sheds before they go out and find a few meals and of course, find a mate. All right, girl, here's a hole for you. Go on down the hole. There you go, sweetheart. There you go. <laughs> Love finding these guys in the wild. But out here on this prairie in the wild, bull snakes are eating, well, what was once known as gophers. And as a matter of fact, the other name for bull snakes is the gopher snake. And well, Minnesota is the gopher state, but there aren't any gophers here. What people thought were gophers way back when, when they dubbed this state the gopher state, was they weren't looking at gophers. They were looking at 13 line ground squirrels and they were misidentifying them and calling them gophers. So there aren't any gophers out on this prairie. It's all 13 line ground squirrels and bull snakes love to eat them. And without those 13 line ground squirrels out here, bull snakes wouldn't be on this prairie. The ground squirrels, which not only dig burrows, which the bull snakes use not only to overwinter winter in, but in the hotter periods of the summertime, they're going down to find refuge from the heat. The 13 line ground squirrel not only offers that shelter to the bull snakes, but they also offer food. An adult bull snake will have no problem getting down an adult 13 line ground squirrel. And the babies, well, they're feeding on the ground squirrel pinkies. So without the ground squirrel, the bull snakes would not exist on this prairie. Now just because the air temperature out here this time of year is 50 degrees and these bull snakes are out in it, that in no way, shape, or form means that you should be keeping your snakes that cold. 50 degrees for three months is what we should be brumating our bull snakes at. The body temperature of that snake, because he was sitting on the warm ground in the sunshine, was well into the mid to upper 80s. So again, just because the air temperature out here is in the mid to upper 50s, that in no way means that you should be keeping your bull snakes this cold during their active period. Now, if you're not intending to breed your bull snakes, you don't have to give them that brumation period. You don't have to give them a three month at 50 degree cool down period. The only reason why we do that is to simulate hibernation, which greatly increases our chance of a successful breeding. The females are gonna stay on this prairie and soak in as much sun as they possibly can to warm up those eggs that they're incubating inside of them. And then they're going to find a mammal burrow or a rotten log or a suitable place to lay their eggs out here on this prairie and then as spring turns into summer when the prairie is in full bloom with flowers like spiderwort and Indian paintbrush and purple lupine but as I'm walking around this prairie something's missing 
and that's the bull snakes. This time of year in early July, most of the bull snakes have left this prairie because in the midsummer sun, it gets really hot on this prairie. So look at the ground temperature here on the prairie. It's 110 degrees. And that is way too hot for a bull snake to be out here. So by mid to late summer, this prairie is going to be pretty much devoid of bull snakes. Sure, there's gonna be one or two that remain, but for the most part, this ground temperature gets way too hot for bull snakes. So in the summertime, bull snakes are shifting their habitats from the prairie where they overwintered and spent the spring to deepen the wetlands and the forests. Where it's much cooler, they have much more protection from the intense sun because of the trees, and they also have a food source here in all the mice and the rodents and the squirrels and other things that are also taking advantage of the cooler forests here in the summer months. Now just because because bull snakes in the wild change their habits from one season to another to escape heat and to find different and more plentiful food sources, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do anything different with your bull snakes in your domestic situation. Again, there is a huge difference between bull snakes in the wild and bull snakes that are captively bred. But the more knowledge that you have about what your reptile's wild cousins are doing out here, the more knowledge that you're going to have on how to better care for them in your homes. But it's not just the forested areas that these wild bull snakes are taking refuge from the really hot prairies. They're also retreating to wetlands like this one behind me where the bull snakes can take advantage of cooler temperatures by this pond, but they can also sit in the direct sunlight and not overheat as they would on the prairie. So along the edge of this pond here, let's take a quick temperature reading. And right now it's reading 86 degrees in the sunshine. So any snakes sitting by the edge of this pond sunning themselves are sunning themselves at 86 degrees, which is the optimal hotspot for bull snakes out here in the wild and in your enclosures. So right by the edge of this grassland here, take a look who's hiding in the grass here. Whoa, 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 come on, come on. Oh, look at this big bad boy. Come on, sweetheart, come on. Oh man, she is just perfectly beautiful. Look at this. Look at this big, dark, beautiful bull snake right by the edge of this wetland, exactly where I expected to find her this time of year. Oh, she is just beautiful. So again, these bull snakes are off the prairies and changing into their summer habits of finding cooler areas around wetlands like this. Oh, it's really super windy out here, but this is exactly the scenario that I expected to find summer bull snakes right on the edge of this wetland here. So these guys are off the prairies because the prairies are really heating up this time of year. And again, bull snakes, they don't like it hot. So they are again going to retreat from the hot prairies and find cooler temperatures again right on the edge of this wetland over here. And this one looks to be a young female and she is super clean, so she probably just shed. But by the looks of her body weight, she just doesn't look like she's laid eggs this year. And it's a little bit early for wild bull snakes to be laying eggs. In captivity, of course, we can control the environment. Out here, obviously, they can't control their environment. So in our domestic situations with our breeding programs, we're about six weeks to two months ahead of where these snakes are. But with the bull snake breeding programs in our domestic situations, those eggs are just about to hatch. So back at the home facility, it's now been 60 days after that flame female has laid her eggs. And look at this, these babies have just hatched over the past couple of days. Now, I put tape on the egg box like this because these guys, man, even though this is kind of airtight, they are still escape artists. But check this out. Woo! Look at these little babies, and they are so animated at this age. Everything scares them. They think everything wants to eat them. They are just little firecrackers at this age. So, out of all these eggs, a couple of them didn't hatch. That's all right, that always happens in a clutch. But this is a real bonus clutch because I got four albino flame bull snakes. Look at these guys. And these guys are gonna get more fluorescent red and orange as they get older. And at the time that I paired up my flame adults, I didn't know that each of them was carrying the recessive gene for albinism. And so to get four albinos out of this clutch, which are now 
Flame Albino Stillwaters. This is an awesome bonus, and I will definitely be pairing up this pair again next year. But I've got a theory that about 95% of all bull snake morphs out there are actually het for something. And with all that captive breeding going on, I really believe that, again, about 95% of all bull snake morphs are at least het for something, even if the breeder doesn't know exactly what they're het for. And this clutch is a perfect example of that. All right, so we're going to cut open this one that might be good, might be bad. I think it's bad. But, yeah. There's an undeveloped snake in there. Oh, bummer. He, he made it right to the end and then died in the egg. But you can still see he has like a massive yolk sac in there. And he just wasn't going to make it. He died in the egg. But this was also a flame, not an albino. But if you look over here, I cut this one open. And, yeah, it looks like a potato in there. That looks like some sort of banana cream custard in there. That one is really bad, so. Anyway, Rattlers, I hope this video shed some light on how to care for bull snakes, not only in your domestic situation, but what they're doing in the wild so that we better know how to care for them in our home. So leave a comment below with a tip or a technique on how you guys keep your bull snakes so that others can read those and learn from you as well. And as always, visit our sponsors. Their links are down in the description. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.